Almost every single night, Charlie lay motionless in bed as the scratching and heavy breathing grew louder and louder. Almost every single night, Charlie yelled out in terror as he felt the blankets being yanked hard from beneath the bed. But this night would be the last. Charlie's dad, hair wild and eyes red, freshly awoken from a deep sleep, burst into the room. What's the matter, Charlie? Why are you screaming? It's here again, Dad. The monster's back. Come on, there's no monster, pal. We've been through this. Charlie's dad yawned and sat beside him on the bed. Charlie could see the disappointment in his father's face, and shame made him want to curl up into a ball and disappear forever. Can I sleep with you and Mum? What? No, Charlie, no. But Dad! I said no. Dad's voice was stern, but then his eyes rolled and his shoulders slumped. Come on, get off the bed. Let's get a look at this monster. Together with his dad, Charlie crouched down beside the bed. They used his torch to shine light all around the underside, but other than a few tatty board game boxes and a pair of socks, nothing was there. See, said Charlie's dad, you must have dreamt it again. You're probably right, Charlie said. Definitely. Now hop back into bed and get some sleep. Charlie got back under the covers and his dad gave him a goodnight kiss on the forehead. Then he walked to the door. Can you leave it open, please? asked Charlie. His mind was already racing. If he heard the noises again, he decided he would jump out of bed and bolt through the open door. Okay, pal, said his dad. Good night. Not long after his dad left the room, Charlie heard footsteps out on the landing. At first he thought his dad might have changed his mind and was coming back to see if he still wanted to sleep with him and mum, but then Margaret popped her head around the door. Great, thought Charlie, she's probably coming to laugh at me again. Hi Charlie, said Margaret, what do you want? Charlie really wasn't in the mood. You know, I used to have a problem with beasts under my bed too. This might be useful after all, Charlie thought and sat up. What do you mean? Well, I used to think there were all kinds of horrible things living under there trying to get me when I was sleeping. Dad used to come in and we would look, but there was never anything there. As soon as Dad left, the beasts would be back, and I never got any sleep. Until I beat the beasts, that is. Margaret gave Charlie a quick, triumphant wink. How do I beat them? Charlie asked, bewildered. Easy. You just kick the blankets off and shout something like, Come and get me if you think you're tough enough, you evil beasts. But I don't want them to get me. This seemed like the worst possible plan. So far, it seemed to Charlie, the only thing that had kept him safe was holding onto the blanket with all his strength. They won't, silly. There aren't any beasts under the bed. You'll see when you shout for them and nothing happens. You're just imagining them. Now Charlie got it. He thanked Margaret and she went back to her room. Determined, Charlie lay awake in bed. He didn't have to wait long for the awful breathing and scratching noises to return. At the first sign of a tug on his blanket, Charlie kicked off the covers and shouted as loud as he could, Come and get me if you think you're tough enough, you dirty monster! Silence. Nothing happened. Muscles he hadn't realised were tense, relaxed, and his escaping breath spread calm throughout his body. Charlie thought his words were much better than Margaret's, and he would tell her so in the morning. But then, the breathing was back, heavier than ever. The sound broke into a wheezy cough before rising into a sickening laugh. Charlie screamed. Margaret heard everything from her bedroom. Silly boy, she thought. He had been even easier to trick than Margaret. The monster trudged into Margaret's room. Yummy, it said. Quick, Margaret hissed. Change into Charlie. We've got it made now, my friend. The monster changed its shape into the boy it had just devoured and left the room. Dad, it called as it went out, trying to contain a sinister laugh. Please, can I sleep with you and Mum? Please? Please?